Will you pray with me this morning? God, we thank you for bringing all of us here safely today. And God, we ask particularly that we not just sing it today, but God, that we truly give our lives to you. Yes. That God, we let us take, let, let you take us and mold us. Yes, fill yes, us yes. with your love and your peace and your joy yes, that God where you lead we learn to follow yes, Lord. God just take us forth from this place and let us know that we have been worshiping you today yes, and let that spill over to others in yes, Jesus name we pray amen. 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 amen thank you you may be seated as the reader comes to say first, I want to reiterate what Tom said, many of you had to swim to get here this morning. That takes quite a lot of commitment, and uh, we who gather here together today, it's no accident, it's where we're supposed to be. Another thing I wanted to say is uh, pray for Jane, she's uh, been limping since last October or so, and Tomorrow morning at 5 a.m., she's getting a new hip. So, Amen. And uh, the sign on the church I go to on Old Hammond Highway says, Faith is like a bird who sings while it is still night. It's a bit of poetry, so. Let that sort of sink in. Maybe we don't need a sermon today after that. <laughs> Faith is like a bird that sings while it is still night. Um, let's see, what else did I want to say? Oh, honoring mothers. Um, I, want, I want to have us honor uh, next week and today Blanche Baldwin. Who, oh, yeah. Gave me the idea for this rainbow stole. <laughs> and uh, all of you, <laughs> those of you who are new here today and haven't been here before, I want you to uh, not worry. Keith, who's 
going to be here next Sunday is one of the best preachers in town. Amen. They, Amen. So return uh, after we're done here today. Return next week. Keith may have uh, already talked about the road to Emmaus and the travelers that were on the road, but uh, I have sort of a different way of approaching it. It's a hot and a dusty road, it's a hard and a heavy load, and the people, they don't always treat me kind. Some are bad and some are good, some have done the best they could to try and ease my weary mind. And I can't help but wonder where I'm bound, where I'm bound. Can't help but wonder where I'm bound. And I can't help but wonder where I'm bound, where I'm bound. Can't help but wonder where I'm bound. Amen. He made it to California in only three rides, hitchhiking all the way. The first day that he got there, he did practically nothing, just sat on the beach, slept on the beach, because he'd missed a lot of... Uh, sleep time in all those rides. And uh, then when he felt a little better, he sat on a rock behind the beach, looking out at the ocean. And uh, his patience was finally rewarded. He saw some whales playing far off uh, with the fountains of spray going up and their tails flipping as they turned back down. He decided to stay a while so he got a job in a small, uh, dirty cafe. Uh, he'd never flipped hamburgers before, but in a couple of days, he was an old pro at it. And lately, he's been thinking about he ought to go on up in California and put his arms uh, as far as they would reach around some of those redwoods. Dear God, protect him as he journeys. There are predators along the road wanting to ambush unwary travelers. Bring him safely to wherever he goes and eventually bring him home. <clears throat> oh, I had a buddy back home. He started out to roam. And last I heard, he's out by Frisco Bay. And some nights when I've had a few, his voice comes drifting through. And I guess I'll join him some old day. And I can't help but wonder where I'm bound, where I'm bound. Can't help but wonder where I'm bound. And I can't help but wonder where I'm bound, where I'm bound. Can't help but wonder where I'm bound. If you think back to the scripture that Morris read, we're all on a journey, and the trick is, do we know who's walking beside us? Think back over your life, some of the high points, some of the times you were deeply disappointed or betrayed, some of the life-changing moments, and as you think back Think about who was there and what was 
Jesus' message to you from whoever was there. A lot of times we don't recognize Jesus when he walks up beside us. And it may take a little discernment. But think about getting the message from God from the most unlikely people. They all have something to say to us. Something important. Well, she left home because she couldn't stand her mother's rules. She was about 16 and thought she ought to be on her own. She took off with some friends. They ended up at Virginia Beach. And uh, they rented a little apartment. They had a little money that they brought along. Uh, but they soon saw that they had to work as waitresses to keep uh, themselves in the apartment. And of course, they partied as much as they could. And they needed money to buy a little booze and a few potato chips and something to keep the party going. It didn't take too long, only about three months, for her to discover that being on her own was not exactly what she wanted. It didn't live up to her fantasy of what it would be like. And so, um, like the prodigal daughter, she decided to return to her mother's house. Now she's working on her GEDs to get herself through high school. Perhaps she'll have some ambition to go on to college. Dear Lord, a lot of us have trouble imagining imaginary friends, invisible friends, friends that walk beside us but we're not aware. Grant that she be guided into the right paths, the path that's right for her. And may she eventually recognize your presence. So let it be. If you see me passing by and you stop and you wonder why, and you think that you'd like to travel too. Nail your shoes to the kitchen floor, lace them up and bolt the door, and thank the stars for the roof that's over you. Cause I can't help but wonder where I'm bound, where I'm bound. Can't help but wonder where I'm bound. And I can't help but wonder where I'm bound, where I'm bound. Can't help but wonder where I'm bound. Another ran away in the night. She couldn't stand the abuse from her stepfather one minute longer. But she ended up on the street. She had a pimp that was supposed to protect her, but usually beat her more than protected. She slept with many men. To hide her own disgust with herself, she got into drugs and alcohol as a way of trying to not remember her misery. Somewhere in that fog, she remembered that her grandmother had taken her to Sunday school. And eventually, it became a, a need in her to try it again. And so she came to the church parking lot, saw all these nice looking people going into the church, turned around and drove away. That happened about four or five times. She'd drive up, 
try to force herself to get into the church, but couldn't do it, and left. Finally, the day came when she did force herself to get all the way into the church. The service had started. She sat down in one of the back rows, and while she was sitting there, Jesus came in and sat down beside her. In a few more Sundays, she joined the church. She started to help out with the children in the Sunday school. She left her life on the street. She got married, but he was like, stepfather and her brothers and all the pimps and all the men who'd taken advantage of her, he beat her too. And so eventually they separated and got divorced. They, in the meantime, she had two boys. She continued with the church. About once a year, she has to go to the mental hospital. The last time she went, she got some shock treatment, which uh, made it so that she didn't remember any of us when she got back, that we reacquainted ourselves. But one thing is for sure, she'll never trust another man. Oh, I go around this land doing the best I can, trying to find what I was meant to do. But the faces that I see look as worried as can be. I guess that they're all wondering too. And I can't help but wonder where I'm bound, where I'm bound. Can't help but wonder where I'm bound. And I can't help but wonder where I'm bound, where I'm bound. Can't help but wonder where I'm bound. They recognized in the breaking of the bread And they looked at one another. It can't be. It's impossible. And they looked back, and he had vanished. You remember from the movie Zorro, Zorro says there are some emotions that we have that are too big. We can't talk about them. There's nothing we can explain. We have to leap for joy. We have to dance. We have to run. They said, didn't our hearts burn within us while he was talking? Well, they're burning now. Amen. So strip off into your loincloth, tie a double knot in your Nikes, and run. Run to Jerusalem. Seven miles downhill all the way. Run up to the disciples' door where they're hiding and burst in. We've seen him. We've seen the Lord. Peter says, we know. We've seen him too. Well, we're all on a journey, and we're never alone. Jesus walks beside us. Amen. I'm sure you know that little poem about uh, footsteps, that the only time there's only one set of footsteps is when Jesus is carrying us for a few feet. 
So we're bound to go where we're supposed to go. We know where we're bound. We're bound for heaven. We're bound for a new heaven and a new earth. We're bound for glory. We're bound for Jesus. 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 Sweetest name I know fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. Keep singing. This is the time in our service where we have the opportunity to give back to God a part of what God has given to us. And you know me, I usually have a story, but today I have a little story. Well, you know, we we forget to have the faith that God's going to take care of things. Sometimes we get, you know, we decide that we're going to be in charge and we have to be in charge or whatever else, and you know, and and we're going to make it happen. So, and then when it doesn't happen, we wonder why it's not happening. Um, I, I suffer from that myself, so uh, to go back to a pride example, as you know, um, pride began, uh, began as this church's picnic, and then over this 10 years it snowballed into you know, a, an event with thousands and thousands of people. But you know, this time of year is the time, time of year when I usually lose sleep because we're down to the deadlines and the money's not there to pay for that big river center room and all those sorts of things. And so. Um, and uh, this past week at our meeting, that was kind of where I was, and I was having a meltdown because we've never been this far behind before. You know, we're always a little behind, but not this far behind. And so the, you know, I, I had my little spiel and said, you know, I, I give up. I, have, I can't figure out what we we're not doing or what I'm not doing. And you know, in essence, I did the same thing that we need to do with, with life in general. I just said, God, it's yours. Take the, you know, where, wherever it's going to go, that's what's going to be, and I'm going to be happy with that. Amen. And then the next day, I got a call from somebody who said, oh, well, I, I wanted to get more involved than I've done. You know, I'm trying to do more things, so now I've convinced my company to donate $10,000 to Prime. Wow. It's kind of like, you know, I went, oh, I'll sleep tonight, and I did. Believe me, I did. So, you know, so sometimes that's what it takes. You have to say, it's not in my hands, it's in your hands, and, you know, and uh, I'm going to let you take care of those things. So, you know, and we have to do that in so many aspects of our lives. So we also have to do that in having the faith to give back to God the part, of, the part that belongs to God. So will you pray with me now? God, we just ask you to bless the gifts that we give. God, bless each and every person who gives those gifts, open our lives, open our eyes, let us see the ways that we can serve you, and God, let our leaders see the ways that they can stretch these gifts just as far as they can to do your ministry in our community and in our world. And don't forget to fill out those blue tithe checks to tell us what you may have done this week as well. Thank you. We remember. And on the night that he was arrested, Jesus was at supper with his friends. He took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them and said, This is my body, broken for you. When you eat this, remember me. And if anyone's here today who needs healing, remember that the body of Jesus can have no defects, Amen. no wounds, no illnesses. Amen. After supper, he took the cup, again gave thanks to the Father, and then he passed it among them and said, this is the blood of a new covenant made in heaven for the forgiveness of sins for you 
and for all. When you drink this, remember me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim our faith in the risen Lord Amen. until he comes again. Amen. Sisters and brothers, at Metropolitan Community Churches, here and all around the world, we serve an open communion. That means that well, you don't have to be a member of this church or any other church anywhere to come to the table of God. All are welcome here. When you come forward, we'll take the bread, dip it in the non-fermented grape juice, and place it on your tongue. Or if you so desire, cup your hands, we'll place it there and you can serve yourself. There will be prayer partners on both sides up front to help you with any prayer needs that you have. All we ask is that you come forward as the ushers direct you. Would the acolytes and servers please come forward? Go over there. O Most High, you gently call us into your presence. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Guide us by your Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord. Take us, mold us, Use us, fill us, call us, guide us, lead us, and walk beside us. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen.